It is my pleasure to invite His Excellency, the Ambassador of China to India, to come and give his address. Mr. Rajan Boker, representatives of the family of Dr. Kotelis, Mr. Sumit Malik, Additional Chief Secretary of Maharashtra, Honorable Sushila Abut, Mayor of Solapur, Mr. Sanjay Deshmukh, Vice Chancellor of Bombay University, Mr. Sudla Kuakali, Chairman of ORF Bombay, Dr. Mr. Bandari, spokesman of BJP. Ladies and gentlemen, Assam, uh, Namaskar. It's really honored for me to be here to participate in today's function. Actually, it's my first time to Bombay University and also my first official visit to Bombay. This is a real great city, and uh, the Bombay University is a great university. The main purpose I come to this university is to participate in the very significant function hosted by Consulate General Office, China, uh, uh, People's Republic of, Republic of China in Bombay, and uh, ORF, and of course, Bombay University. As you all know that the masterpiece of handwriting condolence, condolence message tells us a very touching story. In 1938, young Indian doctor named Kotlis abandoned his middle class life in Bombay and went to the battlefields of anti-Japanese war in the remote northern part of China. He saved a lot of Chinese soldiers' lives with his professional medical skills. Five years later, he sacrificed his very young lives in the battlefields. His story had touched the hearts of many Chinese people at that time. In later 1942, Chairman Mao Zedong wrote a condolence message to commemorate Dr. Kotlis. In the 1950s, this masterpiece was delivered to Dr. Kotlis' family members in India, and then it has been remanded in Solapur. As time goes by, this masterpiece had been slightly broken and needed to be restored. The Chinese government decided to repair it. So this is the story behind the masterpiece presented before us today. Today's ceremony is so unique and very significant. First, we get together to celebrate the restoration and handover of the masterpiece to the Solapur administration again. To my knowledge, there are no more than three pieces of Chairman Mao Zedong's personal handwriting at abroad. Chairman Mao is not only a great leader, the founder of People's Republic of China, but also a very famous writer and very famous calligrapher. This one is truly priceless. It has expressed the deeply sentiment of the Chinese people towards the Indian people, towards Dr. Kotlis. It also demonstrated Chairman Mao's personal artistic achievements in calligraphy. Secondly, this year 
marks the 75th anniversary of the passing away of Dr. Cotillus. Dr. Cotillus is a hero from India and a friend of China. The ceremony shows that Chinese people and Indian people have never forgotten this great hero. Thirdly, the future lies in the past. Two days ago, I visited the Agenda and the Anola caves. I was so impressed by the Chinese elements in the caves. Our historical link can be traced back more than 2,000 years. Today, we have inherited Dr. Cordelis' legacy. Our bilateral relations have made great progress. Our leaders have been engaging each other frequently. Our trade and economic cooperation has reached remarkable achievements. Our provincial cooperation has flourished. We have also begun discussing our cooperation on the area of law enforcement and the fight against terrorism. As Mr. Chairman Kwakali rightly said, India is really my second home. Before joining the Foreign Service, I was at academia in a think tank in Beijing, focusing on Indian studies. I'm so happy today the function is holding in the Jishanin Center. And I'm also so happy to hear that Vice Chancellor announced the center will upgrade to the school for the future China studies. For me, the only reason to join the Foreign Service is because of India. I want to see India. In the early 80s, that time, our bilateral relations is not as good as today's. So it's not easy to get a visa. So become a, become a diplomat is only way maybe to be here. <laughs> Two weeks ago, I called on former Ambassador Menon of India to China. He is also former National Advisor for Security to Prime Minister. He told me he is academia also in China issues. That time for him want to see China only two ways. Number one, he's joking with me to become Maoist. You can get a chance to to be in China somewhere. And number two as a diplomat. So he told me he Fortunately, he preferred the second one. He chose the second path. My first post in New Delhi was in later 80s. Since then, I have witnessed and participated in many big events in our bilateral relations. My wife, Dr. Jiang Yini, got her PhD degree from the Delhi University. She actually is the first Chinese student to get a degree, get a PhD degree from, from India. Her PhD paper is comparative study between Hinduism and Buddhism, and especially two mosques, from, one from Hindu, Hinduism, this is uh, uh, Sankhya, another one, Buddhist master is uh, Nagarjuna, compared between these two masters. Then, to see what's different and what's the similarity between these two great religions. I know that even members of the same family sometimes got problems. India and China are two big laboring countries. It's quite natural that we have sometimes have some differences. But I'm quite optimistic about the relations and our future cooperation. Since I come here, three 
months ago, I have been discussing some new ambitious proposals with our Indian friends. Yesterday, I also exchanged views with Chief Minister, with uh, Mr. Kanan, Kanan, Kwakali, on the same, same proposal, same ideas, insights. For example, I really think we should negotiate the bilateral treaty of friendship and cooperation. We should negotiate the free trade agreement arrangement between our two countries. We also should have early harvest to board issues. We, of course, should also discuss how to fit China's strategy of road and belt initiative with India's Act East policy. As Mr. Kokali rightly pointed out, that strategic fitting is not only focused on collectivities and also focused on cultural exchanges, educational exchanges, and the people to people interactors. Friend, I want to take this opportunity to express my deepest appreciation, appreciation to ORF Bombay, to Bombay University, Solapur administration, Maharashtra government for their support to today's function. I want to say special thanks to the relatives of the Dr. Kotlis for their continued contribution to China-India relations. Actually, 19, uh, three, four years before, 19, uh, 2013, I joined the Chinese Prime Minister Li Keqiang's first trip to here in Bombay, Stobo in Bombay. And that time, Prime Minister Li Keqiang also met the family member of Dr. Cortez. Of course, without the professional craftsmanship and the hard work of two Chinese experts, Mrs. Zhao Li and Mrs. Zhu Pinfang, the restoration work would not be possible. Let's give them a big round of applause. Last but not least, my colleague, Councillor General Mr. Zheng Xiyuan and his colleagues have done a great job to arrange many things, everything related to the restoration project. <laughs> Dr. Cotelis will live forever in the hearts of our two peoples, Hindi, Chini, Bai Bai. Thank you. Friends, this uh, brings us to the conclusion of today's uh, program. I thank you all uh, from the bottom of my heart for sparing the time uh, to attend this. Thank you very much. <laughs>